Okay, we're back on the record on case CR 22-211624, State of Idaho v. Lori Noreen Vallow. The defense just concluded their closing argument, and then we had the lunch recess. The court will note parties are all present, including the defendant. The jurors are also present and all properly seated. With that, Mr. Wood, the state, I believe, will now offer its rebuttal. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And if I can have my computer run through the monitor. Okay, you can set that up. Ladies and gentlemen, the state has met its burden beyond a reasonable doubt. Reason and common sense. Reason and common sense. The evidence in this case is clear. The evidence in this case points to one common thread, and that thread is Lori Vallow. The defense says she's not a killer. She is a killer. Lori is the connection to the deaths. What connection did Chad Daybell have to Charles Vallow? Lori. Why did we talk about Charles Vallow? For the motive. The defense says the math doesn't add up. Well, the defense didn't give you all the numbers, and you know that. The defense gave you a choice of $400,000 to $500,000 a year versus Social Security. That's not all the numbers. Lori believed, and you've seen it through her text, she believed she was getting $1 million, not Social Security funds. She thought she was getting $1 million. The math adds up. And what you see in this case consistently, when Lori wants something, she finds a way to make it happen, and she will get rid of any obstacle. She wanted the $1 million from Charles. She learned her lesson. She learned her lesson when she didn't end up getting the money that she found out afterwards. So when she needed more money, she went after Tylee's money. But remember, she learned her lesson. She waited until after the money hit her bank, and then they killed Tylee. You heard evidence multiple times. She called Tylee dark. With JJ, she'd learned her lesson. She waited until after the money hit her bank, and then they killed JJ. The defense says she's a good mom. Does a good mom, when the whole world is out looking for your kids, dance and laugh on a beach in Hawaii? No. Does a good mom abandon her children in the ground and go marry a recent widower? No. The defense spoke about her call with her sister, Summer Shifflett. Go listen to it. Please listen to it. And when Summer says, you were dancing on a beach in Hawaii, she's talking about the kids dying, and says, and you were dancing on a beach in Hawaii, what does Lori say? Yeah, months later. Months later. It's an admission. She knew her children were dead because she helped plan it. She knew her children were dead because she encouraged it. The defense talked to you about life insurance versus Social Security. It doesn't really make sense. You have to show the dead body to get the life insurance. They couldn't do that. They kept the Social Security. Ongoing payments, monthly payments. The defense brought up, why would she put her son in school and get a nanny? You've heard from her own mouth or her own text. She was tired of the obstacles. She was tired of JJ. She didn't want to deal with him, so she found someone else who could until they buried him in the ground. Let's talk a little bit about the lies Lori told 
and then we'll go over the evidence just a little bit one more time. The lies Lori told tell us what really happened. Let's see what she lied about. She lied about Tylee being at BYU, BYU-Idaho. She lied to the police about she was going to go back to Arizona and take JJ to a special school. She lied to the school, Kennedy School, in Rexburg that JJ was with his grandparents. She lied about to the police about her brother trying to kill her. She lied when she sent a, an email to Chad disguised as KK Walker. She lied to Colby Ryan, JJ and Tylee's brother, about where they were. She lied to Colby Ryan about how Charles Vallow died. Remember what he testified to. He had a heart attack. She told him he had a heart attack. She lied to Melanie Gibb. She told Melanie Gibb that JJ was with Kay Woodcock. She told Zulema that Melanie that JJ was with Kay Woodcock. She lied to the nanny. She said that JJ had gone with his grandparents. She lied to the police about knowing about how well she knew Chad. Called him her brother's friend, not her husband. They were married at that point. She lied to the police about JJ being with Melanie. Remember the last thing that Summer testified to you, her own sister, when she was asked if Lori had been honest with her about the kids. Her response was that Lori had lied. Lori lied to cover her crimes. Repeatedly. Again, does a good mom jet off to Hawaii when the rest of the world is looking for her kids? She knew where her children were. In fact, again, go back and listen to that, the tape with Summer. Go back and listen to the tape with Melanie Gibb. And she says, I know exactly where JJ is. That might be the one thing you've heard her say that's true. Because she did know where JJ was. Lori's lies tell us she's guilty. The innocent don't need to lie. The guilty lie. Think about all the evidence you've seen and her reaction. The body cam when the police went and spoke with her. Go back and watch it. Count the lies. Watch her getting served poolside with the order to produce her children. And watch how she reacts. Listen, the defense asked you to listen to the jail phone call on June 9th. When Chad calls her and says they're searching the property. She's scared. You will hear it in her voice. You will hear the guilt and the fear in her voice because she and Chad both know what the police are about to find. Think about some of the physical evidence here. Bruises on JJ and Tammy. Think about the iCloud. Her words. Her words. The defense says there's no text where she says, I'm going to kill the kids today. Well, no, she doesn't say it like that. But she says it. Let's talk about some more of the physical evidence. The defense mentioned Lori's hair. It wasn't on his socks. It wasn't in his pajamas. That hair was on the duct tape wrapped around the black bag. On the same black bag that Alex Cox's fingerprint and palm print were on. It wasn't on JJ. It was in the duct tape that secured that bag. Think about all the electronic data you've watched or you've seen. Alex's movements, the flurry of information going before in, in form of text and phone calls on those critical dates. Lori knew exactly what was going on. Again, one million dollars. Not 
500,000 versus Social Security. The math adds up. And just quickly, because the defense brought up the text again. We bolded here where Lori is bringing up the kids. When they're talking about death percentages, from Lori, okay, find out her percentage, meaning Hillary, who is Tylee, find, out, find that out for me, and JJ's. They mentioned the storm text, but they didn't tell you all the text. What does Chad say? Just grab me by the storm, and I will follow you to the ends of the universe. Not you will follow me, Lori. I will follow you. Don't let Lori pin this all on one other person. She was 100% involved in this, and all the evidence points to that. When she's talking to Melanie Boudreau, you, telling her, you can't go at all. This is the two days before Charles Vallow is shot. And she says to Melanie Boudreau, you can't leave. We both need to stay here to defend ourselves. It's coming to a head. This week will change everything. And then they killed Charles. Again, when Chad Daybell is texting her about JJ going into the light, we all know what that means. He doesn't have to say die. We all know what going into the light means. And again, what does she say? She doesn't say, let's not kill kids. She says, that is sweet. Again, here's Lori. I need you to check JJ. Check Tylee. She is encouraging. She is aiding. She's part of the plan. Again, Lori's own words. Hold her words against her. See if she got switched. Need you to check JJ. Think about all the times she says she has no more patience. And again, this text, one more time, from Chad. I got the inspiration to go back to my original death percentages that helped us track Charles. And we know what happened to Charles. He's dead. Not fantasy dead, not weird religion dead. He is dead, two bullets in the chest. Tammy is close. And how does she respond? What about J.J.? This is clear. They're talking about dead people and tying Tammy to it, tying JJ to it. And when he says they're at two or three percent, she's upset that it's not zero yet. Again, please check JJ. Is he at zero yet? The defense says there's no text about killing the kids. Do you think there is a perfectly orchestrated plan to take the children? and I should be doing something to help. Remember the text about Nathan Pachenko, who you heard was a singer. And she asked Chad what he thinks. He gives her a dark rating. He gives him a dark rating. Lori gives him a light rating. What does Chad do? Okay, we'll go with you. He will follow her till the end of the universe. Let's talk briefly, just briefly, one more time about what you need to find. The question you need to ask. Lori agree with Chad and Alex to commit the crime of first degree murder against Tylee. Yes, she did. There's no question. And did she, and grand theft. Yes, the math is there. Did she intend for these children to die? Yes. What mother, if she didn't intend for her children to die, doesn't go report that she's missing or dead. It makes no sense to say that she's a good mom when she's not reporting the death of her children or that her children are missing. She intended the death. We've gone through the overt acts. We've met them in spades. You have the evidence. You must convict her. In regards to the murder of Tylee Ryan, 
you have to ask, did Lori Ballow engage in conduct, or did aid, abet, advise, or counsel another to engage in conduct which caused the death of Tylee Ryan? Yes. It is clear. The same applies to JJ. The same applies to Tammy. As the defense spoke, it reminded me of some of Zulema Pastana's testimony. When Lori would tell her friends that nothing she did in this life counted for her, she could do whatever she wanted. Nothing in this life counted for her. And she made a little motion she did. She'd go, doesn't count for me. Make it count for her. Make it count for Lori Vallow that Tylee Ryan was burnt, mutilated, buried in a bucket next to a dog and cat. That Tylee Ryan will never get to go to college, will never get to fully grow up. Make it count for Lori Vallow that JJ, a boy with special needs, had a plastic bag placed over his head and had to fight for his life. Make that count for her. And make it count for Lori. Tammy Daybell had to die so that Lori could get to that money, so that Lori could get to Chad Daybell. And make it count for her that she stole. Again, reason and common sense. Reason and common sense. Lori's behavior shows you that she is a killer. Lori's behavior is not the behavior of a mom concerned for the safety and welfare of her children. Justice for these victims requires a conviction. The state has met its burden. Ladies and gentlemen, reason and common sense reason and common sense. You must convict her. Thank you. In the District Court of the 7th Judicial District of the State of Idaho, in a for the County of Fremont, State of Idaho Plaintiff versus Lori Noreen Ballow, AKA Lori Noreen Daybell Defendant, case number CR2221624, verdict. We, the jury, duly impaneled and sworn to try the above entitled action for our verdict, unanimous, unanimously answer the questions submitted to us as follows. Question number one. In regards to count one of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballow not guilty or guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Tylee Ryan and grand theft by deception? Answer, guilty. Question number two, in regards to count two of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballow not guilty or guilty of first degree murder of Tylee Ryan? Answer, guilty. Question number three, in regards to count three of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballow not guilty or guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Joshua Jackson Ballow and grand theft by deception? Answer, guilty. Question number four. In regards to count four, the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballow not guilty or guilty of first degree murder of Joshua Jackson Ballow? Answer, guilty. Question number five. In regards to count five of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Vallow not guilty or guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Tamara Tammy Daybell? Answer, guilty. Question number six, in regards to count seven of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Vallow not guilty or guilty of grand theft? Answer, guilty. Dated this 12th day of May, 2023, signed by the presiding officer. All right, please be seated. Madam Clerk, thank you for reading the verdict into the record. At this time, let me just inquire of the jury, is this in fact your true and correct verdict? Yes. 